Greetings, everybody. Thank you for joining us here on Channel 16 of the Pittsfield Community Television Corporation. As always, the Civitan Club is presenting a program called Know Your Berkshires. The purpose of the program is to help all of you out there in the audience learn more about the places and people in Berkshire County who make the Berkshires such a beautiful place in which to live. Now, usually we have a program that's based around historical places and people. But the last program we had was done in a beauty salon, which was a fun program. And this time we have another fun program, which is very unusual. And if you're, if you're smart, you'll leave the remote alone and listen and watch this program because you're going to be fascinated with it. I'm fascinated with our guest. I'm fascinated with what this guest can do. We have with us a gentleman whose name is Carl Seeger. And Carl is a magician. Let me tell you a little bit about Carl and his magic. Carl has been dazzling the audiences as a professional magician since 1989 and has been involved in the world of magic before that for over 20 years, for that matter. And when you see him, in fact, you already can see him, you notice that he's a very handsome young man. He's impressive, and he has fine hands. I'm not sure what they mean by fine hands. I, I kind of worry about that. But he's a very warm, very nice person, a very wonderful personality as well. And Carl is very articulate. His devotion to his music flavors his words and colors his conversation. And Carl performs, performs nationwide. In fact, not too long ago, uh, he had a program called uh, Clearly Invisible, Magic Up Close with Carl Seeger. And it ran for six weeks in Florida at the Studio Theater in Sarasota. And Carl has, uh, is really a one-man theatrical show, show by himself. He, he does things that are not uh, dependent on big, you know, large props. He usually uses ordinary pro uh, props, and you'll see what I mean when he gets going. Well, we're going to have some fun today. I want you to know that Carl is going to fascinate you as he has fascinated many of us. Carl, I want to thank you for joining us, and I want to know, let you know that we are very pleased that you're joining the Civitan program called Know Your Berkshires. Well, thanks, Peter. Thanks for having me. Well, it's my pleasure, believe me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start off by asking you a simple question, and that is, are you classified as a magician? Are you classified as a hypnotist? Or are you a sleight of hand artist? Or how, how do you classify yourself? Whatever gets the money. No. <laughs> no, Good I'm answer. Um, Good answer. Well, I wouldn't say hypnotist. I wouldn't say hypnotist. Uh, magician, sleight of hand artist, magician. Uh, it's uh, a, a lot of times people will say magician. It's just easier for them. If I really want to throw a curve, I'll say prestidigitator. Because it's tough oh, to say, yeah, <laughs> one of them. Um, but a magician, uh, a sleight of hand magician. If uh, someone really asks me, a sleight of hand magician. I everything that I do is like you said before with my hands. I, I prefer the close quarter. I prefer the sleight of hand. You uh, you you taught yourself the art of magic, have you not? Yes. Mm. What what did you? Well, you started out when you were as a child liking this stuff. Yeah, actually, uh, I sort of blame my mom for getting me involved in this rather indirectly. She bought a, a magic set for a, uh, a, a cousin of mine, very small, and uh, I basically made it disappear. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, I, I found it. Uh, we sort of, I was playing with it with another cousin who's the same age as I am, and, uh, and uh, we were just intrigued by it. And uh, we wound up splitting it up and taking it amongst ourselves. And from there, it's just... Uh, books. I have a, a large library of books, and I do a lot of studying. So it's a lot of time spent. Well, Carl, you know, of course, that I've seen some of your act, but only once. Yeah. So I'm anxious to see more of it today. Yeah. Oh, good. But I can't imagine something that you, this, this sort of thing you do so well. I was so fascinated when I saw you do this once before that it's got to take a huge number of hours of practice to, to do what you do so well. It, it, and you're, no, you're not rough at it. You're not awkward at it. You are really smooth at it. How well, many hours do you put into this stuff? Well, first of all, thank you. 
uh, that's uh, that's good to hear. Uh, but it, it varies. It varies, and some things uh, that that I might be working on now require thing uh, manipulation that I've already worked on for years on other things, and that helps. It makes things a little bit easier. Um, but uh, then there's some of the new what what might be called within the profession knuckle busting things. That boy, I'll tell you, they'll take some time. I have some things that I've worked on that. Um, for the for the better part of a year that I still wouldn't perform in public yet. I just don't feel mm -hmm. comfortable with them. So it, it'll depend on what I'm doing, what I'm working on, uh, depending on how long it'll take and what background I've got already going into that. Well, uh, now I'm curious about something else. <laughs> uh, I know you live in Turingham. Right. I know you were probably born there. No, actually in Egremont. Oh, in Egremont. Yeah, born and raised oh, in Egremont. But you live in Turingham and you have a beautiful wife named Mora. Right. But you also have three other, not other, three creatures yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the house, two dogs and a cat, a yes. tabby cat, right? Yeah, yeah, Now, yeah. do you practice with the cats and dogs? Well, I got to tell you, as anybody who's a cat lover knows, cats do what they do when they want to do <laughs> that's it. That's right, so, you that's know, right. Forget the cats. Um, uh, but the dogs are actually kind of fun sometimes to, to do things with, like taking them. I'll go to take a ball and throw it, and of course I'll, I'll make it disappear before it, it flies through the air, and the dog will be doing one of these things. And, and it's uh, more for my own humor than anything else, I'm sure. Um, but uh, no, actually, I, I do work a lot in uh, new material, particularly in, with Maura, my wife. Uh, she, uh, she's, uh, uh, you'll hear magicians will practice in front of mirrors so that they can see how everything works. And I do do that to a certain extent, but the, the, the end for me is going to be pr doing whatever routine or pr effect that I might be working on in front of Mora. And uh, at this stage of the game, and uh, she has seen it all, and uh, at this stage of the game, if I can fool her, then I can pretty much fool anybody. <laughs> well, the fact that uh, you've have performed your magic in other parts of the country, not just Florida, but mm -hmm. uh, I noticed the Barrington <coughs> Stage Company. Uh, you've performed in many, many places. Well, what I would like to do is uh, have you uh, stop putting up with my silly questions and comments. And <laughs> tell them, how about showing us a little sample of what you do? Maybe you can get into the, the full program later on, but how about showing yeah, sure. us a sample? Well, actually, it's kind of funny. One of the things that uh, happens often, and uh, and I actually had a very funny situation happen to me once. I was working at a place in Egremont called the Old Mill, and as is often the case when I start working for people, some of the first things they'll say is, oh, watch your watch or watch your wallet. And uh, I was working in, a, in a, the bar area, and there was uh, uh, two couples there, and this gentleman kept saying, oh, watch your wallet, watch your wallet. Well, he must have said it 20 times. And uh, the maitre d' came, and their table was ready, and off they went to the table. And I came back around the corner, and I looked at the, the bench seat there, and here was this gentleman's wallet. And he must have gone like this enough times. He knocked the wallet out of his pocket. He didn't know it. This was prime opportunity Perfect. for me. I just put it in my pocket, and I waited. And later on, I went up to him, and in a magical way, I produced his wallet. I thought this guy was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about it afterward, though, and I thought, gee, that might have been a mistake because he's going to come back with other friends and saying, hey, show them the <laughs> wallet trick. It will <laughs> never happen again. But that's one of the things that, uh, that I run into often is that people will, you know, watching their money and all. And, and uh, first, I, I'd, I'd like you to take that just to, to make sure it's a $5 bill. It's genuine. It's, uh, it looks real. Right. I'm watching you now. <laughs> it looks real. Yeah. It has a picture of... Uh, Bill Clinton on it. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, it's Abe Lincoln. Oh, it's I'm sorry. A, I got the wrong press today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just a kind of in response to people who are always saying to me, oh, watch your wallet and all. And it's really not necessary. I'm not a pickpocket. I'm a magician. And so that, uh, that would be the difference. And it would look, uh, would look something like this. And actually, I combined two old arts, the art of magic uh, and the art of uh, origami. And of course, you know origami is paper folding. It's just folding. There's no tearing or anything. I found if I just fold it up a little bit like this and give it a little bit of a twist, when I unfold it, I find it increases, which is a joke that no one ever gets. Increase it, never mind. Okay, increases in value? Well, that too. <laughs> wow! That's not a $5 bill anymore. No, it's That's not. That's a $100 no, it's bill. Not. 
How did you? Oh, got, God, I've got to see that again. <laughs> I, I've got to see that again. They'll be playing that in slow motion later, I'm sure. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, I, I can't believe that. I, I'm sitting right next to you, and I didn't see you do anything that would turn that thing into a $100 bill. <laughs> How evidence about of, that, folks? Evidence of a, of a misspent youth, they say. How about that? Isn't that something? You all saw that out there in the audience, didn't you? Right in front of your eyes. He, he turned that thing into a $100 bill. Now, if he can do that enough times, we all can go on a vacation. There you go. Right? Yeah. That was great. I'll send you a postcard. Well, that, was, that was marvelous. I don't know how you, I want to see you do that again later. Can you uh, teach me how to do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way of saying, how'd you do that? <laughs> well, you know, uh, what, what do you say to people when, you, uh, when they ask you about the current magic, uh, market, the current market for magic? Well, I, I think that it's, magic is just another form of entertainment. And if, as long as people still want to have fun and enjoy themselves, uh, magic is just another vehicle for that. And, th and that's the way I look at it. You know, I'm, I'm marketing me who happens to do magic. And along the way, we're all going to have fun. We're going to have a great time. And, and, and that's really what it's all about. I still think magic, I, th I say I still think, I think magic is something that, uh, you know, people will always enjoy. They're always, I think, intrigued by it. Um, uh, sure are. I am. Yeah, well, I never grew up. That's why. Well, that's me either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's marvelous. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, well, we're going to be uh, we're going to be uh, asking uh, what three people, two yeah, or three people. We're going to have people. some people come and join us here at the table yeah, from the audience to yeah, join us yeah. here. And uh, but we're going to start uh, we're going to start taking a break for a little commercial very shortly. Uh, but I want you to, to, uh, to uh, tell me, are these three people related to you in any way, or are they part of your staff? Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, um, uh, I don't believe I've met them before. I would ask that they check their pockets now, because uh. if there's something missing later, I don't <laughs> have it. But no, there's no relations. Or well, I was just testing to see if you were going to be honest, because yeah. I know one of them is yeah. my own daughter. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is my daughter. So anyway, well, let's take a short break, Good. and we can do a commercial. And uh, when we come back from the commercial, we'll have our guest join us, and Carl could turn this uh, into in, turn this into a magic show. Okay, great. Let's take a break. Okay. Imagine you owned a television studio. Imagine you had access to thousands of dollars worth of wire. TV production equipment, trained production staff, and live hookups. Guess what? For just a small membership fee each year, you do. When you become a PCTV member, you've got possibilities. Create your own TV program. Get your point of view across. Help your school or organization get publicity. Most of all, learn television production techniques and enjoy a fun and creative environment with your friends and neighbors. Becoming a member is easy at PCTV. Come to our studio at Fort Federico Drive in Pittsfield. Fill out a membership form and soon you'll be on your way to creating your own television program. Hi, I'm Sean Maxwell, a volunteer here at Pittsfield Community Television. When I first came here, I was amazed at the high level of technology available. Studio, production rooms, cameras, we've got it all. As a PCTV member, I'll tell you that the $15 I spent on a year membership is a small price for such an incredible array of production equipment. All of our studio productions are fully digital, meaning we use digital cameras, digital tapes, and non-linear computer editing systems. But the best part is, there's knowledgeable staff here to teach just about anybody how to use this equipment. It's worth a trip just to see what the possibilities are. Come to our studio at 4 Federico Drive in Pittsfield just off B Street, and see how you can take advantage of some high-tech opportunities. Okay, we're back from our commercial. Thank you so much for waiting for us. Mm. Carl, we've done enough talking. All right. Let's and have a let's show. Let's have some entertainment, because right. I just can't wait. Oh, good, good. And we now have three people to join us. That's so right. Ahead. And uh, first, uh, just so uh, obviously you all, all know my name, and your name is? Jamie. Jamie. It's nice to meet you, nice Jamie. Meet you. Yeah, and you are? Jackie. Jackie. Jamie, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> Sisters. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And I'm Dawn. Dawn. How are you, Dawn? Great. Good, good. Thank you. Um, 
Here's what I want to do first. Uh, I, I'm going to keep my sleeves up a little bit like this here. I, I want to do this just so you don't think that everything's going up and down my sleeves and all. They may drop down. I'll try to keep them up. Uh, the first thing I want to do is probably going to get me in a little bit of trouble with some of the magicians that may be watching. And I'll explain what I mean uh, as we go along. And we're going to use these uh, three silver dollars uh, in order to do this little experiment. Uh, now, the trouble part. I'm going to do thing. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do before I do it. Now, see, magicians don't generally do that because then you'll know what to look for, okay? Uh, and I'm going to show you where to look. So here's what's going to happen. I have three coins, one at a time. These coins are going to go from my left hand through this space right here, and this is the space you need to keep an eye on. And I'm going to come over here to my right hand. Now, what's not going to happen is they're not going to come in my closed hand like this. They're actually going to come out of my fingertips like this so that you can see everything that's taking place. You, in effect, won't miss a trick. <laughs> okay? So again, I'll explain. We'll start with three here. They'll go through the air here, and then I'll have one of them over here, and that'll leave me with just two here. Okay. <laughs> and look, there's just a three. Am I going too fast for you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I already missed that. <laughs> Someone said to me earlier, if I stood behind you, could I see how this is done? And the fact is, from the front, it looks like two in my left hand and one in my right. From the back, it looks like one in my left and two in my right. Because <laughs> it's a trick. <laughs> Isn't that something? You, you want to see one of them going? Here, I'll, I'll do it just like this. You'll see it going just a little bit of a blink like that, and you'll see that. Well, I didn't tell you which way it was going to go because you'd know where to look. Okay, but I'll do it visually. How about visually so you can see it? In slow motion. Okay, we'll do it just like this. I'll do it just like this. I'll use just one of them. Just like that in slow motion. Not bad, huh? Not mm. impressive either. <laughs> if I were to take this one, though, and just give it a shake like that and show you that there's none here, but that's one, two, three of them here. <laughs> can, the camera, can the camera pick those up? <laughs> I'm trying to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how All we right. did that. Well, listen, that's something very, uh, very interesting I wanted to show you. Oh, what did I do with it? Oh, here, 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 here. I want to see, have you ever seen one of these before? You can look at that. You ever seen one of those? Yep. Yeah, you have? You've been to Las Vegas? <laughs> <laughs> this is the genuine article. This is actually a genuine Las Vegas purse. Now, I have to tell you, I've given this to hundreds of people, and you're the first person that actually opened it up to look inside. Yeah. Everybody else just turns it over, but that's okay. That shows you have a very unique way of looking at things. Um, I used to keep those coins in here, and actually now I keep these little red balls in here. But... <laughs> Because they're quiet. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. uh, do you remember Nerf Balls? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have to tell you, I was at a party not long ago. It was a real little boy there, and I asked him that question. He said no. That's one of those age-defining oh, yeah. moments. But uh, here's what I found. If I poke that, I can get a second one off there, and we can have twice as much fun. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> no, honestly. Now, here's what I'll do. I'll count while I do this, so this will be easier for you to follow along. It'll happen on 10, just like this. Watch now. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one is ten. Could you hold that for me? You have to be very fast when you do this. Too. <laughs> very fast. When I say ten, it'll jump right through the air here, and I'll catch it here in this hand. All right. Now I'll do that again. I'll show you where to look this time. I'll show you where to look. Got her speechless now. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When I say ten, watch in the middle here. Okay. Hold this for me. Not in there. <laughs> I got a guy the other night to do that like four times in a row. I sold him a car I don't even own. No, I said 10 early because you knew where to look. I still missed it. Yeah. Did I give you the purse or did I take that? You here, I'll it. tell you what. I'll leave, these, uh, I'll leave these right here. Did I give you that purse? Right. No, no, no. I have it right here. I have it here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's a good thing you're here. We'll do the purse one more time. Just for fun, we'll add a third. All right. Now, here's the good part. And it's Jamie. Jackie. Jackie. Jamie. <laughs> Deja vu for you, huh? <laughs> Jackie, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold one of these. If you would hold one tight in a fist, just like mine. Turn your hand over just like that. Perfect. You glued that watch on. That was a good idea. <laughs> you knew I was coming. See how easy that was? Now, I'm going to rub here one time. I'm going to rub here one time. And tell them honestly now, when I rubbed your hand, did you feel that? Did you feel that on the back of your hand? Yeah. You did? Do you know every time I do that, they disappear? Did yours? <laughs> I guess not. You know what would be the operative word there. Yes. <laughs> well, we should try it the other way. We should hold two of them, tight fist, turn your hand over. Just come close to the table like that, and if you would, slowly turn your hand, 
and then slowly just open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'll explain. How about this. I'll explain that, how this is done. It's a little magic, a little psychology, and the psychology is that there are three objects. You only have two eyes, and I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. So if I were to do this, if I were to put one in my pocket, that leaves how many, Peter? One. What? <laughs> <laughs> Let me do this again, either. just for you. We'll start again, Peter. You put one in your pocket over there. Well, look, that's one, two. It's the third one that gets confusing. So if I get rid of this one. And if, no, it's really <laughs> I'll start again. I'll start again. <laughs> oh, there they are again. We'll, we'll get this right. We'll get it right. Look, I'll make it easier. Instead of doing it this way, I'll do it this way. You'll see it jump from my sleeve all the way down. And I'll get rid of this one again. And you see my hand is empty. Now, see, that's perfect. That's perfect. When you glance up here, you're looking at this hand, you're not looking at this hand. That's actually when they disappear and join the one in my pocket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting right next to you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm standing right next to you. <laughs> and I'm missing it still. All right. Well, you know what's, what's interesting about uh, performing this? I find when I perform magic, it's pretty much divided up into two groups of people that watch. There are the people who watch very closely, the real observant people, and then there are the not so observant people. Now, the real observant people would notice that I have, even though I have a red card case, I'm taking out a blue deck from that red case. What they never seem to notice is how it came out of a box that small. <laughs> I, later on, we'll put them back. You'll do a trick for me. <laughs> All right. Now, I want to start with this because this is actually a test of, uh, of observation. This will tell me how observant you all are. Because the truth is, if you're not very observant, this is a whole lot easier for me to do. Uh, and it's based on an old uh, carnival game that they used to do uh, to, to basically swindle money out of people. OK? Do you want to get swindled? No. no. Not at all. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But it uses three cards. And the, the ace, the red ace in the middle, is the winning card. And the two black cards are the losing cards. And generally, what they do is that they'll mix up the cards to try to confuse you, okay? I'm going to do it just a little differently. I'm going to do it almost face up, okay? Remember, the ace is the winning card, and I'll place that one in the center here, and I'll put the two losing cards on either side. Now, I am going to mix them, but I'm not going to do it so fast that it makes it confusing for you, okay? I'll mix them like this. If I go too fast, just say something, okay? Keep your eye on where the ace is going, all right? Now, before I mix them up any further, I just want to see that you're still with me and playing mm. along. If we were playing for money, we're not. But if we were, and you were to bet on where the ace was, where obviously would you point? Now, you see, that's it. The, the, some, the moment you see her blink, the moment you blink, I put in the switch, and I put the ace back here in the center. The two losing cards are actually on the outside. Okay? Unbelievable. So we should just start. We'll try this again, okay? Um, and as I said to you, I'll show you this move. It's a lightning fast switch. The moment you blink, that's what happens. I put the switch in, okay? So if I put the ace back here again, the two losing cards on the outsides. Again, I mix them like this, and then I wait. I wait for you to blink, and the moment you do, I can switch those with this lightning fast move. It happens in a second, all right? Now, I want to make sure that we're all still in the game here playing the same thing. Before I actually show you this move, now, obviously, we know where the ace is, yes? Because I didn't blink. OK. Well, actually, you did, see, because I did get the ace to go back to the center again. That's a trick card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, isn't no, it? No, the only thing that's tricky is me. Look, <laughs> let's, let's try this again. We'll do it this way. You have to remember mm. that the winning card is always the one that's in the center. OK? You have to remember that, OK? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> You have little faith. No, look, trust me. The winning card is always the one that's in the center. Again, I'll make it a little bit easier for you. Nice try. <laughs> I'll make it a little easier for you. We'll do this differently. We'll get rid of one card and use just two. Okay? Now, no matter how slowly I do this, you're not going to be able to tell whether that ace is the card underneath or the one on the top. Some people will say it's the one on the bottom. Some people will say it's the top card. doesn't matter. It's a good deal for me. Because no matter which one you bet on, actually, the ace is this card over here. And these are the two uh, losing cards here. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> huh? Wasn't that All great? Right. Now, I'm going to save these cards. We're going to do this again in the parking lot a little bit later. But you have to bring money this time. Bring <laughs> your Yeah, I'll bring your hundred. There you go. Good answer. Good answer. You know, I was performing. I'll tell you a little story. I was performing at a party um, oh, about a month or so ago. 
and there was about 80 or 100 people there, and they had a lot of round tables like this, and my job at this party was basically to go around to the tables and entertain. And I noticed after about the third or fourth table that this one gentleman kept following me around the room. <laughs> and at one point he said to me, listen, hey, can I get you a drink? Now I tell you that's a really polite gesture, and the problem is it goes right to my hands. And this doesn't look very magical <laughs> anymore. So when I had a few moments, I was talking to the host, and I said, oh, who's the, who's the gentleman over there? He said, oh, he's a card player. Then I figured it out. Mm -hmm. His motive is, let's get the magician drunk, and I can learn to cheat my friends. <laughs> So I'm thinking I'll turn the tide here. I'll turn the tables on him, and I'll mark the cards. You ever play with marked cards? Not that you'd tell nope. me one. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm thinking if I put marks on the back, if you were to take a card, I'd know exactly what it is. It makes my job easier. So I start putting little dots and dashes on the backs of all these cards. I get almost every card marked. I realize I'm using a blue pen. <laughs> Note to self. Mark first, drink second. <laughs> but I'll show you how I got out of the situation. And if you would, as I cu cut the cards, I just want you to say stop for me. Stop. Oh, that was easy. If you would now, just uh, take the card, look at it. I want you to, I'm going to turn away. I don't want to catch a glimpse, OK? If you would, show it to the audience, the people at home. All right. And without showing it to me, put it face down on my hand here. I'm just going to make sure that, uh, that everyone can see, all right? And tell me uh, one question. Do you, do you play poker at all? No. Not at all. This is getting better. <laughs> Um, well, we're not actually going to play poker, but I'm going to start a poker hand. And what I mean by that is that instead of using five cards, I'm going to start with four. Now, I have to tell you, sometimes when I cut the cards like that, I get really lucky, Peter, and they all look the same. Today would be my lucky day. Oh. Four kings. <clears throat> now, if you're a poker player, you know that's a good four of a kind to start with. And if you've played poker at all, you know that sometimes they use wild cards. Now, if your card was a wild card, if I could get it out of there and add it to these cards, I'd have an unbeatable five of a kind. And the way that I would do that is while we're, t we're playing, I'd start talking to you. And you'd do the polite thing and look me in the <laughs> eye. Now, as polite as that is, it'll lose her a lot of money in a card game. In fact, while we're talking now, I've stolen your card. Okay. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> look, I'll prove it to you. Instead of four, now I have, that's one, two, three, four, five cards. Well, I went over like a brick. <laughs> Look, let me, let me show you again. Remember earlier I said I marked almost all the cards? Almost would be the key word here. See, if I rub like this, I can actually get that mark to come off. Oh, my God. How do you get the red one? <laughs> so now we have one red card here. Now, before I turn this over, just tell me, I want you to tell me what your card is. Now, they all saw it, so you can't, you can't cheat. What was your card? Five of clubs. The one red card here. Look, the five of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I've, I've created a whole new problem for myself. I can't hide this five with these kings without you seeing it, Un unless I were to mark the kings with red backs as well. <laughs> and in fact, oh, I couldn't hide these kings in this deck unless, check it out, unless the entire deck was red. Oh, my goodness. Now, <laughs> now, how did he do that? <laughs> Um, they were well, all know, blue. Well, you know, one and mean? the only way to mark this card and make it different now would be to give it a blue back. <laughs> <laughs> that is fabulous. All right. I have to pick you up on one detail. Yes. You said that with the five being a wild card, then you would end up with five kings, which would be an unbeatable poker hand. Unless you had the aces. Five aces yeah, to right? beat those five kings. <laughs> Can I check your sleeve? <laughs> <laughs> no way. I don't know how he did that. Uh, That's let's unbelievable. See. Let's see. Here's what we want to do. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Hey, they, it's they my must, job. They, they, must, they must turn blue, Don. That's all I can yeah. say. Well, here's, here's what we're going to try. Um, I wanted to see if I had jokers here, and I don't. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me about sleight of hand. And they'll say, you know, I've heard of sleight of hand. We know that you magicians use sleight of hand. But what exactly is sleight of hand? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, with the help of Dawn. Jackie. Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose, didn't you? Just to screw me up. I'm going to give a little demonstration in sleight of hand. And here's what I need you to do. I need you to take the cards, Dawn. And I'd like you to deal one card at a time, uh, up to 20. I'd like you to deal 20 cards into my hand. We'll count out loud with you. That's one, one two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Perfect. 
We'll set those here. These we'll set aside for a moment. Now, from these 20 cards, we need to uh, create two piles. Now, they don't need to be exact. Obviously, the easiest way to do that would be to cut them in half. Mm -hmm. doesn't need to be exact, but approximately two equal piles. I can do that? Just cut them in half, yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, I'll point to a pile you'd like. Okay, I don't want to touch it. You pick it up. And without spreading it out, I need you to sit on it. <laughs> These are for you. We might lose it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, if you would, count the cards into my hand. Out loud, that's one, one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Now, you started with 20, Dawn. No help from anybody else. You gave her six. That means you're perched on? Fourteen. Yeah. Wow, and your, <laughs> and your lips didn't even move. That was good. <laughs> I like that. So 14 oh, cards. <laughs> Here's the important question, Don. Are they on the left side or the right side? The right side. The right side. These go on the left. <laughs> I think. Sit on those. Yep, okay. sit on those. All right. Now, there's one other card in here that's going to give me some information that'll, that'll help out in, in this little experiment. What I need you to do is I need you to just uh, put your finger on a card. Don't take it out. Just put your finger on it. That one right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move that up to the top here, just like that. This card is a two. It's the two of hearts. Now, what this tells me is that I need to extract two cards from beneath your posterior. <laughs> and I need to place those two cards beneath your butox. <laughs> and I must do this by sleight of hand. <laughs> now, having done this a few times in the past, we're going to use this little magic wand instead. <laughs> and I made it clear lucite so that you don't think right. it's tricky in some way. So, with this wand and a deft touch that I learned from a weekend spent at the Kennedy Mansion, I'll extract card number one on the tip of that wand. You see it there? Oh, yeah, right. You do. <laughs> <laughs> when they come for me, you're going along. <laughs> And I'll place card number one over there. That's card number one. Card number two is on the other side, just like this. That's card number two, right on the tip of that one. Place that card right over here. That's card number two. Now, that's two playing cards. That's tricky. Yeah. Now, Dawn, if I did what I said I was going to do, and I took those two cards a moment ago, you were sitting on 14. Did we say 14? Yeah. You'd now be on... You took two out? Yeah, 12. 12. <laughs> okay. You're not an accountant, are you? <laughs> Um, so it's really hot in here. Is it? <laughs> okay, take them out. Take them out. Like, there you go. Okay. All right. And if you would, just count them one at a time out loud. That's one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten eleven, twelve, 12 cards. <laughs> yeah, <that's> all, right. <laughs> all right, here, take them. Put them back. Put them back. Back, back in underneath. Yep, yep. Now, a moment ago, you were sitting on six. Six. Should have eight. You should have. Well, you're, <laughs> <laughs> she should be the accountant. Go ahead. Take them out. Take them out. All right, count them all out. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight playing cards. <laughs> I feel like I'm nesting. Peter, you're not, buying, you're not buying a word of this, are you? Hey, listen, no. I'm fascinated with Look, it. Let me explain this to you. This is actually magic on a molecular level. Okay, let me explain it to you this That's way. That's one way to put it. <laughs> if I were to take one of these playing cards and just get it off in my hand like this and then squeeze until the molecules become very small, can you hold that for me? <laughs> <laughs> Look, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. <laughs> we'll take the 10. If I were to take the 10 like that, bring it off like that, and squeeze it down until the molecules become really small. Can you take that one as well? Okay. Pop them underneath. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to here, here, here. You have to put them underneath with the others. There you go. Now, a moment ago, you had, what, eight? Yeah. I just gave her back two. You just did? count these for me. Count them from a height. Drop them to the table. One. one. Two, three, four, five, six. six cards. Now, I have to tell you. I'll vouch for it, too. Yeah. You had eight. Considering the fact that you are the only one that's touched the cards you're perched on, if you're back up to 14, the applause will be thunderous. <laughs> Go ahead. Take them out. Take them out. Uh, they didn't move. Yeah. Go ahead. Count away. One, one two, two, three, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay. eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 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 Playing cards. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Isn't weird? Yeah. <laughs> weird. This is very weird. Yeah, I'll get rid of this here. I've heard of, I've heard of like females that. laying <laughs> eggs, but I know, never knew they could lay eggs. I mean, cards. Hey, I'm good. I'm <laughs> after my mother. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you know, one of the things, uh, speaking of sleight of hand, one of the things that's been going on for a long time, we did some little gambling thing here earlier. There has been for generations this argument, let's say, between professional magicians and professional gamblers, or cheaters, cheaters, really. And the argument is always surrounded around who are the better card manipulators. And it got to a point where a, pro a professional gambler, a cheater, and a magician got together to basically hash this out. And uh, by way of illustration, I'm going to use some playing cards here. Uh, here we go. Perfect. Good. We'll use the four queens. There we go. Let's make sure there's four. <laughs> hey, it's my deck. <laughs> All right. Here's what we'll do. Uh, I'm going to leave these queens here. And actually, uh, I'll leave these queens here as well. And Peter, if you would, um, if you kind of, it's convenient for you, uh, if you would, just print your name in the top border of these queens. Both of them? Okay, yep, both of them. And uh, Jamie, mm -hmm. if you would just do the same thing in the top border of those queens there, just print your name uh, along there. It, it is permanent marker, even though the word permanent has rubbed <laughs> off that barrel. Uh, it is a permanent marker. Magic yeah, I think there's a joke there someplace. <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So we have. Uh, oops, let's turn them up this way. There we go. Um, the four queens, and I should show you. I'll make sure we just get the queens. That. Again, their names are printed. Can you see that? Their names are printed on there, and that's permanent. That's not going to rub off or anything. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place them in various portions of the deck, spaced out widely so they're not near each other. You hear how I click when I do that? People think that I count the cards down when I'm doing <laughs> that so that I know exactly where they're going. I, I, think, I, I, I can't think you do. do. <laughs> well, I can't do that, but I don't generally tell people that because I want them to think I'm better than I really mm. am. So watch, we'll do it just like this, close them up. All right, perfect. And I'll even give them just a little bit of a cut just like this so that we have absolutely no idea where they are. Now, here's the thing that happened. We had the, the magician and the, uh, the gambler are going to have this little bet going on here. If you're going to have a bet, you have to wager something. So the, the uh, gambler decides he's going to put up his car as collateral. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I'm going to keep my eye on you. Now. The magician doesn't have a car. He actually took a cab to the show. But he did just come from a show, so he has just gotten paid. And I have in here, uh, in my wallet, I have some money in here. Can I trust you? Not really. Not really. <laughs> You're honest. I can trust you for that much. Yeah. I'm going to leave this right here. So here's what happens now. The bet is that the magician is going to start first, and he has to cut the cards. He's going to cut them three times and cut two, the four of a kind. Okay, So he starts just like this. That's one, two, three, just like this. And we should find a three, which is absolutely not what I wanted to find. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> it's supposed to be four of a kind. We'll cut them again, just like this. That's one, two, three. Just like that. We should turn this over. You sign the card? Is that your signature right there, Jean? Mm -hmm. That's the first signed <laughs> queen, just like that. We'll try it again. Watch. That's one, two, three. Just like that. Do you? Oh, and Peter signed the card, actually. If I turn this one over. Peter, that's your signature right there? Sure is. That's queen number two. Now, I have to tell you, at this point, the gambler's getting a little concerned to how this magician's finding these cards. But before he had a chance to say anything, the magician cut once, twice, three times, just like that. Turn it over. Look at it. Is that your signature right there? Mm -hmm. That's queen number three. One more time. That's once, twice, three times, just like that. That's always the toughest one because there's so many cards left. But is that your signature? <laughs> 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 no. It's a deja vu for me, huh? <laughs> um, Hmm. Well, actually, if you think about this, the bet was that he had to cut four of a kind. Okay, So with this three here, this would be the three of spades. This would actually be the three of hearts, I believe. Oh. This one here would be the three of diamonds. And, and of course, this one would be the three of clubs. And that would be four of a kind. <laughs> now, <laughs> we saw you put down those queens. Well, and here's the thing. What happened to the queens is in this pocket here, I actually have one queen. That's, that would be the queen of hearts. Is that your sign, queen of hearts, right there? And actually, Peter, in this pocket over here, I have this one, a queen here. Was that your 
queen sure of clubs is. right there. <laughs> sure now, is. Now, in this wallet that's been sitting out here since the very beginning, inside I actually have another wallet. Inside this wallet, I keep a playing card that matches that deck. And, and I believe that's your signature right there, Jamie. Yeah. And of course, the biggest one, the last one in this key case, which uh -uh. has been sitting here since the entire <laughs> Better time. Better not be in there. If I were to unzip this and just check inside right there, I think <gasps> folded up in this pocket, we'll find the fourth <laughs> queen, the queen of spades, and Peter, complete with your signature, I it believe. Sure is. Right there. It sure <laughs> is. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and, and I'm checking everything here. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. You know, people often ask me, I'm going to just, uh, here, I'll put these here. Keep that, Peter. It'll be it's worthless one day. In there. It's, t it's tough enough to have him show us a card, you know, under normal condition, but this one here was folded and put away without our even seeing him touch the key case. <laughs> How about it, Alex? Was All that right. good? Sure it was. I don't like this. Well, we're going to use these... Uh, here, I'll teach, you, I'll teach you real quick how to do a card trick. I'll teach you that. one with the, uh, with the threes, <laughs> just like the this. Trick. Well, you start with the three of clubs. This is sleight of hand. Start with the three of clubs. Okay. Place that one down first. Clubs is always first, followed by spades. We'll use just the black ones for now. Remember, clubs and then spades with one hand, just like this. Watch now. If I just wave, they actually switch. So now this one is clubs and this one is spades. Honestly, God. Look, I'll do it again when I wave again. They go back. That was good. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Now look, when wow. you get when you get that one down, then you do you do like this. You take you cast a shadow with these two here, and then these become clubs and spades here, and these two become hearts and diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous, isn't it? Well, listen, I'll show you one more here because I'm often asked if out of uh, all the magic that I perform, do I have a favorite? Well, I would have to consider this as one of my favorites. Uh, and it uses uh, four half dollars. Okay, you can uh, check that, make sure, uh, make sure they're real. I know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never give money to people. <laughs> no, they're real, real half dollars. I'll place these here, and we're going to use these four threes. Okay. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, what I'll do is I'll explain this as we go. I'm going to just cover the uh, half dollars with uh, the playing cards here. And this is actually not a magic trick. This is actually based on a scientific experiment. And in order to, for this to make sense to any of you here, have you ever heard of what they call telekinesis, where you move objects with your mind? Sure, I do it I, all the time. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to try something like that, but I'm going to add a little magic because it makes it easier to do. And here's what I found. If I snap like this, it makes the coin invisible. Now, this just makes it infinitely easier for me to do, so that when I think about it, I can move that coin all the way across to here, so that when I snap again, it becomes visible. Now, when I lift up the cards, I should actually have two of them here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll leave those right there. We can keep an eye on those. We'll do it again, just like this. Snap, it becomes invisible. I move the coin from there to here, and when I snap again, it becomes visible. So now when I lift these up, I have three of them here. <laughs> How about that? One more time. Unbelievable. Like what even touch? Just snap. Move it along just to here. Snap again, it becomes visible. So now look, when I lift it up, that's one, two, three threes. And four clubs. Unbelievable. <laughs> How do we do that? Huh? All right. Thank you. How do we do that? Thanks very much. Unbelievable. Listen, that's been great. I, I want to thank all of you for helping me out here. You know, check your pockets oh, now. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you. Very good. Yeah. Fabulous, isn't it? That? that was too Unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. How did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Carl, I can't believe it. And you know, uh, you're not going to do the lemon trick. You can't do that here today. No. Well, have me back again. We'll do it again. But someday, someday, I hope people will have an opportunity to see Carl or watch Carl do a trick with a whole lemon, but I can't uh, explain it. You can do it better than I can. <laughs> well, actually, uh, the lemon trick has kind of a funny uh, history to it. It's been done for quite a long time. It's not anything new, but the, the funny part was there was a gentleman who really made it famous back in the, oh, probably the 1920s or so by the name of Emil Jaro. And uh, Emil Jaro actually started out as a strong man in the circus, but he hurt his back, so he couldn't do this anymore. And uh, 
So he became, he taught himself magic and became a magician. And he was a very, very funny man. He just had this, you know, he had a great thick Hungarian type of accent and he was just a very humorous person. And uh, uh, Horace Golden, who was a big illusionist at the time, was performing at a theater across the street in New York. And Horace, that, right at that time, the sawing a woman in half had just become this big rage. And uh, the theater manager came up to him and said, uh, he said, Emil, he said, they've got this big banner across the street, Emil Jero sawing a woman in half. He said, you have to do something about it. So he went out and he had a sign made up for his famous trick, Emil Jero sawing a lemon in half. <laughs> but uh, the, the history basically is that, uh, the, the effect is that basically a, a, a bill is produced or a bill is borrowed from somebody and I like to have it signed and all. And then uh, ultimately it's vanished and winds up inside this lemon. It's not been cut. That has not been cut. And I would have someone from the audience cut it open, and voila, inside is this, uh, this lemon. Of course, now I can't do it on your show because everyone mm. will know what to look for. Well, <laughs> I like to do, that, do you understand it's what he true. said? Yes. I saw him. <laughs> I saw him. Uh, he came to a, a Civitan club once as our guest, and I saw him give a, a, was it a dollar bill to uh, one of our members, and he ended up writing on it. And uh, uh, after the, after the person in the club, I think it was Nick Ruggieri, wrote something on it, then he gave it to somebody else and wrote, uh, wrote some more on the, on the dollar bill. He took it back, rolled it up, stuck it inside of a lemon, was it? Is that the way it worked? No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. Uh, no. I actually made it vanish. No, you made, it, you made yeah. the dollar bill vanish. That's what it was. Then he took a lemon out of a box, a whole lemon, cut it in half, and there was a dollar bill with the same writing that these people wrote on. Not just the dollar bill. It was a bill that they wrote on. Now, you tell me how anybody mm -hmm. could possibly do that. <laughs> he has to have voodoo or sorcery <laughs> or something. Maybe there is some of that hypnotism. There's yeah. got yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah. There's got to be. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what else are you going to do for us? Can you do an encore for it before uh, we run out of time? Yeah, okay. One of the things uh, that I was doing recently was I was reading about, um, uh, I don't even remember the magazine, but I was reading this article about playing cards, the history of playing cards. One of the things, of course, everybody's heard of tarot cards. Playing cards actually come from tarot cards. And to this day, you'll see some people that will actually tell your fortune or your future based on regular playing cards as opposed to tarot cards. Um, and I started doing some research on that, and I found some interesting things. Well, first of all, think about this now. There are four seasons in the year. There's spring, summer, winter, and fall, fall and winter. There are four suits in the deck. There are 52 weeks in a year. There are 52 cards in a deck. If you were to take a deck of cards, turn it face up, spread it out, count up all the dots, and add them up, you'd come up with 364, which is exactly how many days there are in a lunar year. Okay? So there's, there's, this is this correlation between playing cards and telling people's futures. Now, I, I want to try a little experiment along those lines, and here's what I'd like to do. I'd like you to help me out, and I want you to think of a time in, in, in your life or somebody's life. I don't want anyone to think that earlier we set this up and I, you know, did your, I knew your birthday or something like that. But I want you to think of an important date. Mm -hmm. um, okay, it could be a friend's birthday or something like that. Uh, uh, specifically, the month and the day. We don't need the year because it happens every year. Okay. You have one in mind? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to think of the day first, the number. Okay. Concentrate on that number for me, if you would. And and my first impulse is that it's odd. Mm -hmm. It's an odd number. Okay. Well, here, let me, let me do it this way for you. I have a date book here. And what I did in this date book is I wrote the names of playing cards in every one of the days. There's 365 of them here. Uh, you'll see they're different, uh, you know, the King of Clubs and the Ace of Spades. And, and they will repeat a few times only because there's only 52 cards. <laughs> okay, so if you would, I'd like you to take the date book. I'd like to look up the day that you're thinking, the month and the date in there. All right? You don't need to tell us what it is just yet. Okay, you have it in mind? Look at the, the date that's there, and there's a playing card written in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, now there's no way that I could know what day you are going to think of. Is that true? Okay, so for, for the benefit of all of us here, what's the day that you're thinking of? The month and the day. Do you want... <laughs> yeah, no, you can say it. It's okay. You got the book. I can say it? Yeah, you can say it. May 3rd? May 3rd. Okay, so in the date, May 3rd, there's a card written in there, isn't there? What's the card that's written in there? Nine of hearts. The nine of hearts. Okay. Inside the front cover. If you were to open up the front cover, inside here there's an envelope. Could you just take that out for me? <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I did earlier before I came. I took a playing card out. 
and I popped it inside this envelope. Now, of all the dates you could have picked, and you saw there are different cards in each one, you picked the one that had the nine of hearts in it. Well, the card that I placed in here earlier, <laughs> if it'll ever come out, is the nine of hearts. Unbelievable. <laughs> Can you beat that, huh? <laughs> Can you beat that? <laughs> Jamie? <laughs> There's no trick to it that no. you can see, is there? <laughs> right? There was nothing in that book that said he, he'd pull out that nine of hearts out of an envelope or anything like that. <laughs> it's amazing what 10 bucks will get you, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I just All right. can't believe it. Well, do you have anything else up your sleeve? It'll be up ahead. Just my elbow, but that's a birthmark. <laughs> is there anything else you can pull? We've, we've got to about three more minutes, you know. Three more minutes. Two more, three oh more minutes, God. something Actually, like that. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> here, huh? You can, uh, you, you want to talk a little bit about uh, your, uh, I'll tell you what we ought to do. We tell the audience that that people uh, could call you if they ever needed your, your services, right? <laughs> yes, they could. <laughs> uh, we're talking not only theaters, but we're talking about private parties. Absolutely, yeah. The, the, the good thing about doing sleight of hand, too, is uh, when, you're, when you're using... Uh, these kinds of props. I mean, I can go anywhere. I don't necessarily need a table. I don't always get a table. You can walk around amongst the group. Uh, you might have a table where you can stop at. This kind of a thing, too, I can also do from, uh, you know, a small stage and perform for a larger group, almost like what we have here. Um, that's what I think the beauty of it is. It, I, my show is in my pockets, essentially. Uh, if you're doing something that requires a theater, and, you know, if you're sawing a woman in half, it's not something you do in somebody's living room. You know, you need a theater, and not too many people's living rooms are that size. So uh, that's kind of the beauty of it. Uh, I, I don't say that I don't like the whole big theater thing, uh, sawing a woman in half and all. I mean, it's, I like it, but it's just I prefer this kind of a thing. And so, yes, I can do private parties in your home, anywhere from well, four people, one person, quite frankly, up to, you know, 100 people if you can, if you can accommodate that. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's fun. It's a fun size to work with. It's more intimate that way. And I think that's what it is, too. I like the intimacy of it. So is there any way that... Uh, <laughs> I slipped off. Is there any way that we can uh, uh, put Carl's telephone number on the screen at some point so that we can let people know where they can get a hold of them or how they can get a hold of them? Because there are organizations as well as people who might be able to... Uh, uh, may want to call Carl. Because Carl is, in my opinion, a very, very astute, very polished, uh, sleight of hand magician. I think he, do, he does a terrific job. Are there any other tricks you can show it before we wind this thing up, or are you out of, are you out of time and, and energy? Well, I, t I, did a, I did a setup for a whole set here. Actually, here, let's. Uh, I had a the deck of cards here. Cards that seem to be the medium of choice. Okay. Here's, uh, here's what we'll do, if you would please, if you would just select a card for me. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Show them the ten of clubs, I won't look. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I do that to make my job easier. I'm thinking if I eliminate cards one at a time, eventually there'll be one left. <laughs> uh, as I thumb through, say stop. stop. Take the card, look at it, remember what it is. Show it to everyone in the audience. Now she thinks they're all ten of clubs. <laughs> Actually, this is the wild card here. This is the queen of clubs. It's Peter, the Peter card. It can be pretty much anything I need it to be. Um, uh, but, but if you would, let's do it this way. Just print your name really big on the face of the card there. Perfect. All right, excellent. Now, there's a, a extra black there, so it might be a little difficult to see, but you can see that the name is written across here, and that you can vouch for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that won't rub off, even there's that one with the... <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, if I were to take and place that in here just like this and square it up just like that and give it a little rifle, it'll actually come back up to the top, which makes, oh makes it easier God. to get at. <laughs> How did he um, do that? Yeah. So here's, <laughs> that <again. laughs> well, here's the thing. I'll make it a little more difficult. If I place it down here and just like this and then place this in here like that and square it up, uh, I can't tell exactly how many cards it is, but if I give it a little rife, it'll actually come up. Aces are wild. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, they are. If you blow on that, see, change right back into her card again. <laughs> That's great. And uh, actually, the interesting thing, too, is I keep other one other card over here, too, which is actually her card as well. <laughs> 
Okay. Because I couldn't find it. I hate to say that, but we've run out of time. We've run out of time. Carl, you are terrific. Oh, good. And I just hope that more people have the pleasure of watching you do these uh, tricks, if you will, because you're a great entertainer. And I want to thank you oh, so Peter, much. Oh, Peter, thank you. It's my for pleasure. Being with us. Thank you very much. And thank all of you here for helping me. Yeah. Jamie, thank Jackie, you thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thanks for being with us. I hope you enjoyed this program. You can watch it on Wednesdays and Thursdays on Channel 16 and Pittsfield Community Television. And keep in mind that the Civitan Club is an organization that does an awful lot for the community and the people in it and does an awful lot for those who need more help than we do. Thank you again for joining with us, and I hope you have a good uh, day. And, Carl, again, thank you so much. Thank You're you. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Don. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>